I swear sometimes, I'm an idiot. I've seen this floor plan a couple times. I've always been like, what if somebody built it different, put a sofa in it instead of a dinette? It's been here the whole time. Hey everybody, Josh the RV Nerd here at Bish's RV up around Grand Rapids, Michigan today, taking a look at a little Riverside Explorer. I've seen a floor plane like this from the Cherokee Wolf Pup. I've seen it from the Riverside Retro with those cool little 1950s diners colors. And, and, and both times I saw it, I said, this is like, this is a great little solo run around, like, you know, Ford freaking Ranger. Awesome, easy camper to pull with. Maybe some tow package SUVs could handle this one. Like a tow patch, uh, package Explorer would yank this all over the place all the time. Like, I think it's only like 16 foot tip to tail uh, total length and it only weighs just over 3,600 pounds fully loaded and a chunk less than that, obviously, unloaded. But I've seen it before, but I've always seen it with a dinette. And every time I looked at it, I said, you know, I kind of wish it just had a sofa. It makes me wonder what it would look like if it just had a sofa. And bam, here it is the whole time. So this is kind of the laminated uh, version of the Riverside Retro, but it doesn't have those little 50s flares going on here where it's got a little more traditional uh, interior in it. I'm not going to necessarily say modern because it's still very HOA approved brown on brown, but it is very much in tune with what today's builders are building in many cases. This, uh, they are using Asdell in the laminated sidewalls of this, but it's not a fully laminated product it's mainly just the walls that change and you're changing from a tin skin to that fiberglass skin um, you're also looking at a little more aggressive tire package on these which uh, I, I think is kind of cool it gives it a good look and they actually have uh, some wheel well guards in there god forbid you have a flat tire might be a literal silver lining uh, to an otherwise rainy day um, this could be a little couples model the, the sofa can fold down into a small sleeper but when I look at this I see like just a uh, j just one person and a dog or something like that. Like this is just a little one person go around camper, not fancy glamper. Just get out, get basic, get dirty, go fishing, have fun. And speaking of that, you got like a little kayak or a bike or something. You could load that right up the back of this, like a kind of a <laughs> jerked over toy hauler. <laughs> And if you've seen my previous videos, you know I refer to this RV as a towable truck camper because with that rear, um, you know, primary entry door, well, only entry door because otherwise you're jumping in and out of windows or punching a hole through a wall like Wiley e. Coyote, um, you know, it, this is laid out very much like a lot of truck campers. But the thing is, um, you know, even the kind of truck campers that call themselves like half ton truck campers typically still weigh more then the payload of a half-ton pickup should be handling. That's where this kind of comes in. If you're looking for that kind of floor plan, you're looking for that small, compact ease and simplicity. The crazy part is something like this, a full travel trailer with its own holding tanks and bigger holding tanks or whatever, typically runs less money than a lot of even small truck campers. And I think you're kind of getting more for it overall. The only downside is you do have to tow it. So you're looking at things like, you know, backing it up now and then. Now, this is the thing I was really talking about over here. What we're looking at is the campsite of the RV. That, that's a nice campsite viewing window to check out your campsite. But most of the time, I see this done with a dinette down here. And I've always said, what if they did it with a sofa? I got my finger in the frame right there, didn't I? Son of a gun. Anyway, looking at this thing, you still have a handy little sleeper function right there. Um, and, you know, your back is basically pointed toward the windows. But I don't know. I like it. What is your two cents on that, though? Would you rather have something like this with a small little two-person dinette? Because you're not you're dinette in here. Because this is a, I think these are like seven and a half foot wide. They're a narrow body variety of product. They're not a full size, full width product. Um, what, what would be your preference there? Now, I'm all up in this thing's face right now because I am not using a wide angle lens. So this is not a big camper. There's not a lot of space for a big, long, gangly goofball like me to maneuver around. Oh, hold on power outlets under there. Okay, solid. I would like to see some USB plugs, but one of the things that you might be able to leverage is the fact that this AM, FM, Bluetooth stereo does have a USB charging plug on the front of it. So, hey, that's kind of cool. And if I back up and pivot around straight across from the TV would be the, um, you know, where you could theoretically put a TV on the wall over here. 
I like how they do that. It actually says weight limit 12 pounds. I wish more manufacturers would do that. It's simple. It's smart. It helps get the uh, the idea across, you know. You do have a, a, a full-size air conditioner, but these things are only about 6'3", six, 6'4", six, inside. Like, my head is nearly skimming the ceiling, even without my shoes on. And as you saw from my preview footage, it's a little bit of a Henry headbanger up in this sucker. Now, something else right here. This is a Camp Queen bed. It's a 60 by 74, but... The body width of this camper is wide enough that if you were willing to remove what is already very limited precious storage space, but if you're willing to remove this little headboard storage chest, mini chest or whatever, you could put a, uh, a 60 by 80 true queen bed in that. Now, looking over here at the, the kitchen, it's simple, but it's effective, you know, um, you got that stainless steel sink inset into the uh, sealed edge thermal foil counter. I like the little backsplash. It seems that only brands like Lance and Northwood know how to put uh, side splashes beside a stovetop, though I, I've been told by RV manufacturers that that's difficult for the production teams. I, I don't know. It seems like a bit of a cop-out to me. But I don't work in the factories. I don't know what is and is not difficult. Sometimes think, ooh, that's a lucky Uh, Apparently, my thumb hit the kill button after I, squirrel, saw something shiny and went, oh, need a locking bathroom door. I don't even know what else I might have been saying. I don't know. My train of thought's gone. Uh, let's move on. Bathroom. Not the world's biggest camper. Not the world's biggest bathroom. And not the world's biggest amount of elbow room. But for a small little camper like this, I think they did the best they could. This will be better for lefties than righties. Now, I, I pride myself on being fair, clear, and candid. I don't believe in like a lie by omission is still a lie to me like if you look at this you see how the wall panel in the bathroom on the left is a different color than the shower area on the right so you kind of visually interpret that as um surround paneling well it's not it's also not super tall because remember shorter rv means shorter headroom in the shower thankfully i was able to stand up in that but man i used every ounce of that skylight i felt like a uh like the bubble in the top of a submarine practically peeking out of this thing. But what I was getting at, those are not shower surround panels. That is just wall paneling. So what you need to do when you're done showering is take your towel and wipe that down to avoid water sinking into it over time. Now that's not a like, oh, I forgot one time. It's going to break my RV. No. But along with that, this, I don't get it. It's a vent, but it's not a vent fan. I don't, I don't, I don't understand. I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. So, but the thing is, I have a recommendation for you to work around this. So first of all, when you're sitting on the toilet, looking down at your phone, this is what your FBI agent sees back. How you doing, Curtis? I don't know. Maybe his name's Curtis. I just named him Curtis. Mine. Anyway, you think when you get a new phone, you keep the same FBI agent? I'm not sure. What I'm getting at though, there's a, a fairly easy workaround for this. If you want a powered vent fan and a good one, Look up the company Hengs, H-E-N-G-S. I'm not sponsored by them. I just really like their product and I like mentioning their name every now and then. Um, basically, it's a full-size, big, high exhaust flow vent fan. Um, and because there's that ceiling light right there, right next to it, we could piggyback the 12 volt power off that and put a vent fan up in that sucker where I think most of us are gonna agree there probably should have been something to begin with. And I would normally like to show you these RVs in road mode with the slides all closed up, but um, as you can obviously discern, we don't need to do that here. But one of the thoughts that I had with this having that rear entry door on this model is if you pull into a, uh, a rest station, a parking spot or whatever, and you don't have room to like open stuff beside you since the door comes off the back side of this one, there's nothing I can imagine blocking you from getting in and out of this. This is totally turtle friendly and cracker barrel approved dude and you know it's it's sometimes it's difficult to discern the actual stature of something the size of something when it's filling the entire camera frame and you don't really have anything to compare it against and i realized that if i just backed up that surveyor over there that's considered a smaller camper and you can see how it looks big in comparison to that explorer <laughs> Sometimes perspective is a wonderful thing. Now, one of the things I discovered in this is it's a good thing it has four corner front and rear stabilizer jacks, because if you don't put one of those back jacks down and you're my size and you hop in this without anything hitched up to the tongue, it is almost ready, willing, and able to pop a power wheelie. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I actually learned that lesson once, make sure you put a jack down in the back. Um, in a pop-up camper, when uh, the front of the thing went up, when myself and a client that was looking at the RV 
uh, we ended up on the, the back bed uh, in, in a very uncompromising position. And I'm just glad her husband was not there to see it because I would have ended up with a black eye instead of just a broken heart. She never did call me back. Neither here nor <coughs> there, though. Again, we have uh, laminated aluminum frame sidewalls. The majority of the trailer, though, is still stick built. That's actually not a necessarily uncommon thing on little campers like this. Like, even, um, say, like Alpha Wolf, Arctic Wolf uh, travel trailers and fifth wheels. They're considered a laminated RV, but only two out of four sides of the RV are actually laminated. Just kind of a funny thing that we do in the RV industry. And by we, I mean everybody, because I've noticed even people shopping for RVs, uh, they tend to ask about the wall construction. They don't care so much if the floors and the ceiling or however else that other stuff is built, just the sidewalls. It's, I'm not defending it. I'm not saying it's stupid. I'm not saying it's smart. I'm just, it's an observation, something I've noticed. Now there's like full storage below that east-west bed down there. And you may have noticed um, the propane tank there in that pass-through compartment. It is a singular propane tank. It's not real hard to slap a second one on there and just add a uh, changeover regulator. But that does ship in the front pass-through compartment because a lot of these are actually shipped on a flatbed uh, to, to really maximize, um, you know, uh, transit and minimize cost. Again, uh, kind of a, uh, a flat tire wheel guard there. You've got the uh, bigger AT tires on these. Um, backing up a little bit, although I do always laugh that the, um, you know, the tread pattern in the tires really helps it avoid uh, spinning out in the mud, you know, brother. But obviously that's not a thing on trailer tires. Tiny, tiny little awning. I'm going to call that the prom date. Just cute as a prom date and frankly just as small. Neither here nor there. Moving on. We are rear camera ready. And again, a towable truck camper concept where you have that rear entry door and, and the front bed area there. And like I said, rear corner stabilizer jack's doing a great job of not bucking us off this thing. Oh, the sidewalls. They are using Asdell in the sidewalls um, as well. I like that graphic, you know. The, I'll give this company credit. Like they're simple, they're small, they're basic, they're inexpensive uh, in comparison to most of the RV industry, that is but they've always got something kind of cute on the looks. But this, uh, normally I'll say, hey, yeah, there's a benefit, there's a push, there's a pull, there's a give and a take. I feel like this is just a miss. They're right next to each other. Why was that not plumbed together for a single sewer outlet? Then again, this coming from the guy who literally asked, why doesn't anybody build it with a sofa? And it existed right here the entire time. So <laughs> maybe I'm not the best to judge. <laughs> So yeah, obviously it's very similar to some things that we've seen on this channel before, but different enough, I felt it kind of deserved its own little day in court. And I, I don't know, I like these little towable truck camper mutant <laughs> things. But what do you think about it? I'll leave you a link in the video description to check these out and uh, be able to compare uh, maybe the uh, the retro stick and tin version side by side, get some price point comparisons for you. One link in the video description will uh, help you check all that out. So when you're ready, we're ready. And until next time, take care, stay safe, have fun. And happy camping, everyone.